Hi guys and welcome back to the Analog Wonderland YouTube channel. My name's Emma, I am the marketing assistant at Analog Wonderland and I'm back today with a slightly different, more vlog style video from us following on from the Berger film review. So I have now just finished shooting my Berger Pancro 400 in my trusty Pentax and in this video I'm going to get into some of the results. Whether you are new to film photography or a long-time analog enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews, to how-to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! If you haven't already watched our YouTube review, please go back and check that out. And now, let's get into the results. So here's a little flashback. I loaded my Pentax on camera and I decided to push it to 800 ISO. So I'm gonna go out with my Pentax, my favorite camera, maybe do a bit of street photography, maybe even do some nighttime photography, uh, given I've pushed the film, um, hopefully I'll get some great results with that. So I ended up starting with a bit of portrait photography with my lovely volunteer flow. Um, it's always hard to get people in the office to volunteer for photos even though we're a film photography company um, a lot of us are quite camera shy <laughs> but um, I'm hoping under the studio light I'll get some really interesting results um, I'm interested to see if that emphasizes the grain or not and then at the weekend I did a bit of street photography in Cambridge where I saw this amazing man in a bin playing the guitar <laughs> Street photography is what I enjoy most and I think especially for a film like this, lots of grain and lots of character, it can really lend itself to that sort of urban photography and add that grungy, gritty look which I love in my photographs. Um, and next I'm taking it to Alex to see if he can work his magic on the film and see what results I get. I'm just here with Alex, he's about to process my film. So I pushed it to 800. So Alex, what's the um, developing situation gonna be? So I'm gonna pair this with Rosenau just because it'll be more consistent with the next tour world. Um, because it's been pushed, I'm gonna shoot it for, it should have been 17 minutes, but due to the difference in temperature between 20 degrees and 24, I'm going to do it for 11 minutes. So if you push a film, you give it less time? Um, no, if you push a film, you give it more time, but the a lot of the temperatures that are recommended is 20 degrees, and we developed at 24 degrees. Okay, so, so you need less time. The increase will increase the developing speed, so you then have to kind of, yeah, you kind of up the time and then reduce it again to count correct. Got you. Set the time on the Jobo for 11 minutes. And then you just have to wait for the water to heat up. The Jobo took just a few minutes to warm up and then we left it to do its thing and came back when the magic beeps called us. Say that again. She's doing the beeps. The beeps. The beeps. It's finished. I'm really hoping this has come out nicely. Me too. Ooh, there it is. It's got that quite dark burger goat face to it anyway. But you got your shots. And here are the results. So essentially when shooting film, if you've got a low ISO and a really bright sunny day, you are going to have less grain. Whereas if you're shooting in low light or maybe overcast lighting conditions and when you're pushing that film or shooting a really high ISO film, you're going to have even more grain. So you can really see that in these photos. Uh, Berger 400 is a 400 box feet film and I pushed it to 800. 
So I can't even imagine what the photos would look like if I'd pushed it any further. I didn't think that I'd have as much grain with the portraits because I was using quite bright like studio lighting but even in those you can really see a lot of texture in the film. I think if I had a sort of more creative setup in mind or a bit more intention when I was shooting the portraits that could have looked really cool if I'd styled it a certain way but I think I prefer that grainy look with the street photography especially uh, with the architecture I think it lends itself best to that where you can pull out all the textures in the brickwork or some of the ivy against the buildings but some of the photos the grain is just on another level and I say that as a big fan of grain. I really like how the photos of the man busking in the bin came out. I think this is an example of how the subject matter and the grain can really complement each other. This is such a sort of urban style image of something really spontaneous happening in the street. And I think that dirty, grainy, grungy look just works well with that photograph. In comparison to the portraits I took at the beginning, I don't think the grain complemented them as well because it was quite a clean setup. I had the white background, the studio lighting, and I don't think grain was adding anything to that image per se. So there we have it. Those are my Berger results. I actually do really like the film despite maybe what I've said about the grain. I really love grain personally, I love the atmosphere it brings to a photograph. I just think with a film like this that is super grainy, you have to be a bit more selective with what you're photographing. But of course that's just an aesthetic choice and it's completely up to you and uh, what you prefer with your photographs. I love how it looks with street photography. I would be curious to push it even further just to see what that does and I can definitely see what some of our customer reviews and some of the tweets we saw were referring to. Uh, Elise on Twitter compared the photographs to looking a bit like a charcoal sketch and I can completely see that. There's just so much texture in the images. It did still hold up well, you do still have a lot of detail especially with the architectural photos so I definitely encourage you to play with this film, push it, see if you like the results. I'd love to see someone shooting a gig on this film and see how the grain comes out there. But it's definitely a fun one to play with and experiment. And if you give it a go, let me know how you've got on. I hope you've enjoyed this video and the little behind the scenes of the lab. Thanks to Alex for being so wonderful and developing the film. Hopefully we will be doing more videos like this soon. Thanks so much for watching, see you all soon, bye!